Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Julia Hayes. I'm one of the associate pastors here, and it is my joy to welcome you to this service of worship at The Vine, an online campus of Wrightsville United Methodist Church. We know that God is going to meet you today in the midst of this service, and so we are so grateful that you are joining us to worship God. We'd love the chance to connect with you. So if you would take a moment and either click the link that's in this video description or scan the QR code that will be on your screen in a few moments. There you can let us know that you're here and let us know how we can be praying for you. Now I invite you to take a big deep breath and let's prepare our hearts for worship. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Eun Seo Gang. I'm one of the associate pastors here. Please join me in our opening congregational prayer. The words will be shown on your screen. God, make us fertile soil in this time of worship till our heart so that we will grow your fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In our daily lives, keep us from striving, and instead, help us trust the work you are doing in us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The King of love my shepherd is, whose goodness faileth never. I'm nothing lack if I am his, and he is mine forever. Where streams of living water flow, my ransomed soul he leadeth, and where the burdened pastures grow, with food celestial feedeth. Through all the ages, length of days, thy goodness faileth never. Good shepherd, may I sing thy praise within thy house forever. Please join me as we now go before God in prayer. Let's pray. Holy and loving God, we thank you for gathering us together today in your name. God, we thank you that you are big enough, powerful enough, expansive enough to unite us together in your spirit, even when we aren't together physically. God, we thank you that you have called us your people and that through Jesus Christ, you are sanctifying us and making us your bride. Lord, please forgive us for the ways that we haven't always lived up to that call. Lord, while you have called us to be gentle, to be generous with those around us, we have often been afraid 
and hoarded what we have instead of looking to the world with an open hand and an open heart. Lord, please change us even now in this time of worship to respond to your world with generosity and love. God, as a part of our response to your world, we know that there is so much brokenness, so many places where your healing is needed. God, we are especially concerned about Israel and Gaza. And Lord, we pray for your presence and your peace in the midst of conflict. And God, we have many concerns and fears that are in our own hearts, and we name them before you now, either out loud or in our hearts. God, we thank you that you hear our prayers. God, we ask that you would use us to help answer our prayers. Use us however you see fit to do your will and to help bring your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we move now into a time of reflection and practicing generosity, I'd like to remind you that there's lots of ways that you can give to support the ministries of Wrightsville United Methodist Church. You can always use our U.S. mail, and you can also use some technological outlets, including our website, which is wrightsvilleumc.org, as well as our smartphone app. Let us now continue to worship God. Hi, Wrightsville kids. I'm Pastor Julia. I have a question for you. Do you know how tall you are? If you were here, I could take my tape measure and see. I could measure you and see how tall you are. Maybe you are 32 inches, or maybe you are 40 inches. I don't know. You could maybe ask your parent at home and see if you have a tape measure and you could find out how tall you are. Well, I am five feet tall plus two inches. I am five feet, two inches. And that's a pretty normal size for a grown up to be, but I've always been a little bit short. And when I was younger, maybe your age, I was really short. I was almost always the shortest in my group of friends or the shortest in my class. And it was really frustrating sometimes. Maybe you, even if you aren't very tall or very short for your age, I bet you're one of the shorter people in a lot of places that you go. Maybe if you're in a crowd or trying to watch some parade or a show and there's someone tall standing in front of you, and it's so hard to see. It can be frustrating when you're too small to reach something on a shelf that you want to get to and you have to get out a step stool or a ladder. It is hard when you can feel like you're too small for the rest of the world. Well, today we're reading a story in scripture that's about someone who felt like that. His name was Zacchaeus. And we don't know actually how tall he was based on our tape measure, but we do know that he was pretty short. And he struggled because Jesus was gonna come by in something kind of like a parade, and he really wanted to see 
Jesus. But he couldn't see him because there were lots of tall people standing in front of him. The other thing about Zacchaeus is that he wasn't very nice. He had a job called a chief tax collector. And that meant that it was his job to collect money from people, but for good reasons, but what he would do is he would ask for more money than they actually needed to give him, and he'd keep it for himself. So a lot of people didn't like Zacchaeus. So no one was going to save him a seat or move so that he could see Jesus coming by. So do you know what Zacchaeus did? He climbed up into a tree so that he could see Jesus. And here's what's really surprising. Jesus noticed him in the tree and he came and he looked up at him and he said his name. He said, Zacchaeus. Now, I bet if I were Zacchaeus, I'd be nervous that maybe Jesus was going to be mad at me about the bad, mean things that I'd done. But that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, Zacchaeus, come down from that tall tree because I want to have dinner at your house today. Can you believe that? Jesus knew Zacchaeus' name and had him come down from the tree to spend time with him. You know, no matter if you are tall or you're short or you have straight hair or curly hair or brown eyes or green eyes or blue eyes, no matter what, God knows you and God knows your name and God wants to spend time with you. And that can change everything. After Zacchaeus came down and had time to spend with Jesus, his whole life changed. And in fact, he wanted to be generous and give to other people. So he gave back all of the money that he had stolen, plus a bunch extra. That's the kind of difference that it makes when we know Jesus. And that is really good news. Let's say a prayer now together. God, Thank you for making us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you that you know us by name and you love us no matter what. We love you too. In Jesus' name, amen. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Eun Siu Kang. I'm one of the associate pastors here at Ricefield United Methodist Church. I'm so grateful for this privilege of delivering God's message today. As we continue to our sermon series on the fruit of the Spirit, we have already explored five of these love, joy, peace, patience, and kindness. And today, we will look at the sixth one, goodness. So now, hear the word of God from Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and he was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. 
Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Speak through me and always beyond me so that your word might be heard by your people this day through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. When I was a kid, I always attended Sunday school. Well, more technically, I didn't really have a choice. I could not miss Sunday school because I was the only pastor kid at the church where my dad served as a pastor. And also, we lived literally right next to the church in the parsonage. But sometimes I didn't feel like going. So I tried hiding in my room or my dad's office, but mostly I ended up having to come out whenever someone called for me. Nevertheless, there was one part I always look forward to doing, that is the praise and dancing time. The songs I sang are still fresh in my memory, and one of my favorite songs was I'm going to sing a song, and I believe the Holy Spirit opened your ears to understand this. I want to see, I want to see my Jesus. However, I am a little man, so I can't see Jesus. 사케오는 엉금엉금 올라갔어요. Zacchaeus climbed a tree. 뽕나무 꼭대기로 올라갔어요. Zacchaeus climbed a top of sycamore tree to see Jesus. Did you understand? Yes, I believe the Holy Spirit is working here. Well, as the song says, Zacchaeus was a little man, and many of us might have thought his height was the main reason why he struggled to see Jesus. But today's scripture introduced another significant factor alongside Zacchaeus. It is the crowd. Often, we view the crowd as merely a backdrop to this story. But today, I want to invite to you to go deeper into this story and pay more attention to the crowd as one of the key players in this story. I know, I know, I understand that focusing on the crowd might seem strange at first glance. So before diving into this part, Let's first look at who this Zacchaeus is and what is happening around him. Zacchaeus was a Jew and a ruler and a rich tax collector. Well, actually, he was more than just a tax collector. He was the chief tax collector, which means a top man like a district manager supervising other tax collectors. At the time, in the days of Jesus, Israel was under the rule of the Roman Empire, and they employed Jewish tax collectors. It means these tax collectors took tax out of their own people and made extra money by charging more than what the Roman government asked for. And that extra money went to their pocket. 
So tax collectors had a bad reputation for being extortionists and traitors as they served the oppressive Roman government. So it was no wonder that the people did not like Zacchaeus. In this context, Zacchaeus wanted to catch a glimpse of Jesus while Jesus was walking into the town. But Zacchaeus had a little problem. He was a little man and couldn't get a good spot among the crowd to see Jesus. And let us face it, people were not willing to help him out either. They practically boxed him here out because they didn't like Zacchaeus. Let us think about Zacchaeus in this way. If Zacchaeus had been a person who was respected by his neighbors, or if Zacchaeus got along with his neighbors, surely people would have helped him to see Jesus. People would have said hello and called him to come forward, like, hey, Zacchaeus, come here. But they didn't. This is why verse 3 says, Zacchaeus, was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not. It was not just because of his short height, but also because of the crowd. The crowd who stood between Jesus and Zacchaeus. So Zacchaeus had to climb a tree looking for Jesus. The crowd didn't care for him. Nobody paid attention to Zacchaeus. Their eyes were solely focused on Jesus. But Jesus was different. Jesus looked up and found Zacchaeus. And he even called him by name and walked to Zacchaeus. And by doing so, Jesus turned the crowd's attention to Zacchaeus. He even entered Zacchaeus' house and stayed at home, the home of sinner of sinners in the town. And surprisingly, Zacchaeus promised to give half of his possessions to the poor and pay back to those he defrauded four times what he took from them. Jesus did not make this request. Jesus did not order to Zacchaeus to do that. Zacchaeus freely volunteered his act of charity and reparation after his meeting with Jesus. And what? What transformed Zacchaeus to such an extent that he would make this radical decision? The answer is found in Jesus' exceptional goodness. The goodness that Zacchaeus himself even never expected. The goodness that Zacchaeus never thought he deserved. Indeed, Jesus' goodness given to Zacchaeus was countercultural. It was risk-taking for Jesus to come to him and stay with him and have fellowship with him, as it was against the entire community's norm and culture. Jesus could have been rejected and alienated and even judged like the one he embraced. And look at the legal experts and Pharisees. They were grumbling. Today's text says, All, all who sow it began to grumble. It means even Jesus' disciples also grumbled. Nevertheless, Jesus walked to Zacchaeus and called him by name. That act of Jesus melted Zacchaeus' heart, and that act of Jesus transformed his life. Today here, 
we notice a distinct contrast between Jesus and the crowd. At the beginning of this story, every eye in the crowd is inwardly fixated on Jesus. It is like a big crowd at a Taylor Swift concert, all centered on one figure. At first glance, the crowd seems like Jesus' faithful followers. They welcome Jesus, they cheer for Jesus, they pay attention to Jesus. On the surface, it seems what they are doing is right and doing good and commendable. But their cheers for Jesus carry a negative undertone. The attention that is being centered around Jesus is ironically building barriers against the others who do not belong to them. Their inwardly focused structure and shared joy within themselves push away those who feel rejected, sidelined, and marginalized. Even if they believe they are acting righteously and doing good, their actions inadvertently hurt others. Their inward focus drive others' way. Then, Jesus does something truly remarkable and countercultural. He breaks through those barriers by decentering himself to center those decentered, in this case, Zacchaeus. In this story, we see Jesus' attention going beyond the inward focused crowd. It is outwardly focused. Jesus is reaching out to those who feel overlooked and to those who feel unworthy of God's love. Yes, here we see Jesus on the move. His outward move is expanding the horizon of entire community who follows him. From that moment on, the community is not a community that serves itself. It is transformed into a community to serve God and others. This is the goodness of God. Jesus shows us how divine goodness and transformation occur in one's life. They do not occur by our own righteousness. Remember, Zacchaeus bore the fruit of Jesus' goodness, neither of the crowd's wine nor of his wine. It all started with the goodness of Jesus on the move outward. Friends, where do you find yourselves in this story today? When we talk about goodness in the Methodist tradition, we learned three simple rules. They are do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. But let us pause for a moment. Even before we are called to do good, we are told to do no harm first. And there is some deep wisdom in that order. Because if we only focus on doing good as religious people, we might often inadvertently harm others. A true disciple of Christ is not just seeking a good relationship with God for themselves, but also making a bridge between God and everyone around them. And that right here is the heart of real goodness. When we come to gather at the church, gathering in this special place, centering around Jesus and sharing bread and wine, serving and worshiping, we are doing good things, right? But what is that for? Are we doing this to be a bridge? or to be a barrier, to be like Jesus or to be like crowd. Zacchaeus 
as we know, was not exactly the crowd's favorite. They looked down on him and made him feel he didn't belong. But by the time we wrap up today's story, there is Jesus right there with Zacchaeus. Then, where Jesus is, where the center is, and that is where Zacchaeus is. This embodies the essence of the last of those three simple rules, stay in love with God. But today, I'd like to add a little something here on the move. Stay in love with God on the move. As the body of Christ, we are called to be where Christ is to be. We, the church, should fix our gaze where Jesus' eyes rest. We, the church, should walk where Jesus moves towards. We, the church, should extend our hands where Jesus reaches out. Only then, we can truly be Jesus' body and each part that do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God on the move. Beloved Riceville, where do you find yourselves in this story? And where do you stand today? Are you walking the path that Jesus paved? Or are you in the crowd? And where are your eyes on? And what is your goodness for? And what is your goodness with? Do no harm. Do good and stay in love with God on the move. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, as we reflect on Zacchaeus' story, we thank you for the reminder that your love knows no boundaries and that your goodness is freely given to all. Help us to embody the true essence of goodness. Give your heart. May we be instruments of your love and goodness, reaching out beyond the crowd, making a bridge between you and everyone around us. In your holy name, amen. Beloved Riceville, remember always, do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. Be on the move with Jesus, embracing His guidance at every step, and spread the true goodness of Christ for Zacchaeus in this world. Go in peace. May our God of love and peace, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, go with you and stay with you this day and forevermore. Amen.